Hello, good afternoon. Thank you, Victor. Um, welcome to this uh, webinar dealing with uh, some German trend surprising news. It's a summary of some developments uh, over the last couple of months, uh, beginning in December last year. So we will go along some uh, legal developments and the introduction of new guidelines, etc. So you see in the agenda um, an overview of uh, of the uh, most relevant changes. Um, there is uh, change number one. That's an adjustment in the German foreign tax law, Außensteuergesetz in German. Number two, it's uh, a uh, complementation of the general tax code um, with uh, a legal basis for advanced pricing agreements. Number three is a new guideline um, dealing with uh, the procedural elements of uh, transfer pricing that has been implemented or uh, published in December last year. Change number four, that is some uh, uh, new guidelines on the uh, transfer pricing materially legal elements that has been introduced in July this year. So, background of uh, these uh, latest developments, as you can imagine, is uh, the OECD PEPS Action 8 to 10 and the uh, new. OECD transfer pricing guidelines implemented in 2017. So Germany followed that rule as many other countries as well. So the latest uh, uh, yeah, implementation has been taking place this year and refer to those major uh, developments uh, in the last, last couple of years. The affected laws are number one, Let's avoid this uh, typical German name of, of, of a law, Abzugssteuerentlastungsmodernisierungsgesetz. Um, let's name it law number one that has been adopted in May uh, this year. And law number two, that's the implementation act for the ATAT uh, legislation um, being adopted end of June this year. And the last uh, element uh, is a set of outdated administrative guidelines on transfer pricing. So the oldest uh, part of, uh, of these uh, guidelines uh, has been from 1983. So that is uh, yeah, 40 years old. Um, yeah, and you can imagine that uh, has uh, been very outdated uh, today. Yeah. Um, let's start with the change in the foreign tax law. Uh, that covers two major things. The first thing is a restructuring of paragraph one of the foreign tax act. Um, this paragraph one uh, in the previous version was um, a bulk of uh, different topics uh, in, in one paragraph, um, 15 sentences, uh, different areas from um, transfer of functions uh, to, to general definitions, etc. So that was a, a complex rule and really hard to, to deal with. So um, it is consequent to to restructure that and um, uh, this includes some editorial changes. Um, then the incorporation of the ATAT Implementation Act and um, a new paragraph 3A and 3B um, includes now a definition and uh, guidance or yeah, the legal basis, not guidance, but legal basis for the determination of the arm's length uh, price. Uh, a new paragraph 3C includes um, the legal basis for the DEMPI analyze uh, and for 
dealing with intangible assets. The next new thing is a uh, paragraph 1A, that is the introduction of a price adjustment clause um, for intercompany transactions. The definition of the arm's length price mainly is based on the OECD transfer, price, transfer pricing guidelines uh, 2017. Um, the actual conditions are relevant. So the contractual arrangement is a starting point for further analysis. Then next to that, the functions performed, risks absorbed and assets used um, are relevant. Uh, the characteristics of the assets and services provided are another um, element to be considered. The economic circumstances and the business strategies behind. So overall that mainly reflects what is uh, included in chapter 142 of the OSC transfer pricing guidelines. In general Germany has uh, referred as much as possible to the OECD guidelines. So that is a, a general uh, approach of, uh, of the German legislator. Um, no local interpretations of any or not, not, not uh, uh, too much individual uh, local interpretations of the guidelines, uh, but a clear uh, reference to the guidelines. Um, the intention is to have a, a global standard for avoiding disputes uh, in the future. Um, irrelevant is um, the alignment of intercompany contracts with the factual conduct. So if there's a mismatch between uh, the legal reality and the economic reality, so that uh, in future will be challenged by, by the tax inspectors. Another key element is the functional and risk uh, analysis that's now included in the Foreign Tax Act as well. Um, so we have now a legal definition in German law, not only in, in any guidelines, but in law. Again, functions performed, risks uh, taken, assets used, characteristics, circumstances, legal framework, business strategies, all that uh, is relevant for uh, performing a function and risk analysis. Again, reference to, to the OECD, that is uh, repetition of the slide before. Uh, the comparability analysis is now included in law um, and here the interesting thing is that the legislator is expecting a reflection of the taxpayer uh, in case that he is not able to find any comparable transaction. So what does a reflection mean? That is not uh, probably defined, it's just stated you as a taxpayer has to reflect your individual situation. That in my view needs uh, further guidance by, by uh, the minist uh, Ministry of, of Finance. So otherwise I think that is not, yeah, it will provide a, a risk and a challenge. Um, interesting thing here is that the existence of, of location savings, locational advantages, advantages for example in China, um, low labor costs um, need to be considered by the taxpayer and by the tax authority as well. So uh, here is clearly stated that the German tax authority has to accept the existence of uh, uh, location savings. So in tax audits in the moment we see often the situation that uh, tax inspectors are not accepting location savings for uh, yeah, analyzing the local situation in China for example. Um, but now here is uh, in law 
clearly stated that the German tax authority has to accept the situation of vocational advantages uh, if they exist. The timing is another important thing now. Um, here, the law includes a clear deadline principle. So the time when the agreement of a transaction um, has been uh, closed um, is, is relevant. So the circumstance at, circumstances at that time are relevant for determining your arm's length price. Um, the question now is what impact does this have on a price setting or outcome testing transfer pricing policy that is not clearly defined. Um, the question is, is the outcome testing approach uh, still accepted? In my view, yes, but that's not clearly uh, defined here in law. Um, that's, here is an example. Um, we have a situation in the company agreement is from financial year 2020. We have prepared a benchmark to support that transaction, um, referring to the years 16 to 18. 18. Um, that is um, the documentation for the situation uh, at the point of, of the price setting. Um, then in the next step, when we review the situation, uh, one year later, um, we have then either a benchmark uh, as before 16 to 18 or alternatively uh, from 17 to 19, one year later, um, for outcome testing purposes. Um, that is not clearly defined. Is that possible or is the time of the agreement that would be 2020 still relevant? So, yeah from my point of view, not uh, clearly excluded. Uh, so the outcome testing approach should uh, still be possible, but the law is not clear on that. New is a best method rule. So you as a taxpayer has to have to set your arm's length price according to the most suitable transfer price method in your individual case. So that's your task. Um, you can apply uh, out of the catalog of transfer pricing methods whatever you want or whatever is um, appropriate for your individual transaction. Um, however, the law still provides a preference for the standard methods. So there's no, there's no hierarchy of methods, starting with uh, CAP, uh, cost plus, result minus, etc. cetera. Um, but um, you have a clear indication for, for, for the standard methods um, over the profit methods. And um, yeah, the tax the, the the tax law is very clear on or in preference of of the the cup message. Um, what does that mean for you when you define your transfer pricing uh, policy? Um, do you have to provide a complete method discussion, or is it um, sufficient to select one method and to provide, describe, support that method. Um, that is not, not clear. I think um, German taxpayer should uh, proceed as before, select one method, support that, uh, provide an argumentation, and that uh, is sufficient. Um, here, a new element is that the tax administration has now um, a right to, pro, to, to select um, an, a method what is from their perspective more suitable. Um, and the argumentation could be or is, is, uh, is in law 
if it is more likely from the perspective of the tax administration that another method is more suitable, then uh, the tax inspector has the right to select that other method. Um, and that is combined with the obligation for the taxpayer to support this approach or this challenge by the tax inspector with information and documents. So you have to support the tax inspector challenging you with another method. So that is the, the key element here. And um, yeah, I think that is the first challenge here in, in this uh, 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 new uh, foreign paragraph one uh, foreign tax act. Uh, because where is the boundary between the tax authorities and the taxpayers, right? Um, you have selected, supported it, uh, your, your approach um, as best as possible, and you will be challenged with an argument that uh, it is more likely that another uh, method is uh, applicable. That is not clear. So um, I think that will lead to discussions in future tax audits um, because this more likely is uh, yeah we expect that this this uh, this uh, this will be picked up by by the tax inspectors then um, on benchmarking studies how to determine your bandwidth or range um, of, of results. Um, here is clearly stated in law that uh, not the individual value is relevant, but a range of comparables that is not new. Uh, uh, it is clearly indicated how to narrow your range um, if differences in comparability remain, so that will lead to this typical uh, interquartile uh, range situation. Um, so exclude the lower and the upper quartiles and prepare a study with uh, with interquartile ranges. Um, the tax authority has the right to correct your results to the median or to adjust your result to the median of your study if your um, value is out of the range. So if you have a, a situation uh, or result uh, outside the range, then the and, and provide uh, a, a study or the tax inspector will provide a study with a with, uh, range, um, then he has the right to adjust that to the media. Um, new is a opening opening clause. Um, so you can uh, made, make credible that this value is uh, uh, in, in conformity with a third, party, a third party comparison, then uh, you can reject this uh, um, approach of the tax inspector and um, stay with your uh, result outside of the range. But that is a, a, a new documentation uh, exercise uh, being introduced here by law. Then next element is the DEMPI concept and uh, the uh, discussion of intangible assets that is new in German law or German foreign tax law that was uh, not uh, be included uh, before. Um, so chapter six of the OECD guidelines um, are now implemented in, in national German law. Um, here a difference is that the German legislator is talking about a intangible value and not uh, intangible asset. So that is a, a difference to, to the um, definition in, in, uh, in the OECD guidelines. Um, the law includes a definition, what is a intangible value? Um, we have uh, regulations on the determination of the ownership. So that is uh, then the, the legal owner of an intangible asset. 
Um, so if your patent uh, is registered on behalf of your headquarter in Germany, then the uh, owner is um, is, is uh, Germany, and according to the Dempi concept, has uh, to be analyzed if there are other parties involved in the development, enhancement, maintenance, protection, and exploitation of uh, this intangible asset and uh, to be remunerated uh, accordingly. So, but uh, in the first step, the legal owner would be then the headquarter in Germany. Um, clearly stated is that a mere financing function uh, in connection with the development uh, or with the DEMPI of an intangible asset um, has to be remunerated in accordance with chapter 10 um, but the financing function itself uh, has no access to the profits being generated out of this intangible asset so remunerated yes but not uh, access to the overall profit uh, out of, of an intangible asset so it could be then a, a cost plus uh, uh, remuneration or limited to a cost plus remuneration. Uh, we, we will talk about that later when we uh, go to the, to the uh, guidelines on this. Um, the contractual risk assumption uh, is a starting point for an analysis of the actual control of the risk. Um, that is uh, included and um, the last uh, point is that the uh, remuneration of the DEMPI functions being involved um, is not um, linked with any methodology so that is not limited to a cost plus for example so the uh, full catalog of methods could be could be applied for, for the uh, performing that uh, part of the analysis. So that is the selection of most relevant things in the Foreign Tax Act. That's not a complete list, but it's a selection with the mo most relevant things. Um, let's go to change number two. That's the general tax code. That's the Abgabenordnung in German. Um, Till today, we had only a fact sheet on uh, APAs dated from 2006. Now, the legislator has um, in, implemented a new paragraph 89A um, dealing with, with the performance of uh, APAs. Um, the intention is uh, to, yeah, to, to indicate that the importance of an APA uh, is increasing and the in instrument of an APA should be more prominent in, uh, in, in, in the tax law and not only uh, based on a fact sheet. So they want to improve the use of uh, APAs. Um, Germany is not really a country with a long list of uh, uh, APAs uh, being performed and closed. I think the list is uh, not that long um, as expected uh, 10 years ago. And now this is, um, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the German legislature uh, tries to, to improve that, uh, the use of this instrument. Um, mandatory is that a double taxation treaty with Germany um, exists. A MAP clause uh, uh, is, uh, yeah, needs to be included in that double taxation treaty. Um, so that corresponds to Article 25 of the OECD model treaty. Um, typically, Per, typical period is five years, uh, then an overview of the fees. The fees increased compared to the uh, previous situation. So it starts with 30,000 euros. 
and for SMEs, it is uh, a fee of 10,000 euros. So to my knowledge, there are not many SMEs, uh, German MEs, uh, having APAs uh, in place. So I would be surprised if there would be any uh, SME. So maybe it will work, maybe not. So we will see how the instrument of APAs will, will work in the future. In general, um, the, the content of APAs, the procedures, uh, etc., are in line with the uh, OECD guidelines as well. So there are no material uh, differences. So, um, so I think there is no need to discuss that in in more detail uh, today. Change number three, that is the introduction of uh, administrative guidelines 2020 that has been uh, published just before Christmas last year. Um, that is part of um, an, a general update of the set of transfer pricing guidelines. So the previous set of guidelines until this year uh, did consist of this very old guideline 1983. Then we have had the principles on procedures from uh, 2005. We had a guideline uh, on the use of names from 17, on CCAs 18, on MAPS 18, and on the uh, uh, court case Hornbach from 18. All these documents have been replaced now and are part of the new set of guidelines from 21. So that is the guideline 2020 from last December and the administrative guidelines transfer pricing uh, from July this year. So two um, documents and many, many pages less than before instead of the catalog of, uh, of the, uh, on the top of the slide. Background, yeah, part of the update. Then we have um, the situation that the new guidelines are applicable to all open cases back to, to old years. Uh, so applicable with immediate effect. So that will lead to challenging situations in my opinion. Um, so, if you have a tax audit with open years of starting from 14, 15, that's what we still see very often here in Germany, um, you will be uh, challenged with, with the new guidelines already. Um, so that is, in my view, not, not a very good situation and needs, uh, you need to deal with that. Um, and by this occasion, the Ministry of Finance um, did go one step further and has tightened the German documentation requirements of, on this occasion. So uh, through the back door, um, yeah, so you have new challenges uh, with your transfer pricing system. Sorry, the key elements of these uh, 2020 guidelines. Um, extended obligations to cooperate and submit documents. So there's a detailed description um, how to co cooperate and what documents uh, to be uh, submitted. So including emails, including um, uh, analysis from your advisors, etc. So there's a, a detailed catalog um, what you have to provide. Um, interesting point is as well that domestic retention periods, we have for example a retention periods of 10 years here in Germany, um, are extended to foreign countries. If you have uh, a retention period in, in another country, I don't know, five years, uh, now you have to, uh, uh, the, the, the period is extended to 10 years as well. So there's uh, an overrule of, um, of foreign uh, situations. Um, again, the introduction of the Beth method rule, interesting was here, I, I have addressed it here again. The um, guidelines have been published before the, the legal basis have 
uh, has been introduced. So the legal basis has been introduced, as you saw before, in May and June this year. And the guidelines on that um, already has been introduced last year. So that's uh, the uh, yeah, interesting timing by legislator and the uh, tax administration. Um, I think they missed um, an occasion to provide guidance on uh, important new topics. So there is no sentence, no word on business on digital business models or on value chain analysis list uh, analysis that is not covered. So we have, for example, now here in the, in the moment um, the discussion at the level of the OECD on pillar one, pillar two, digital business model. So no, no, what, no word is uh, here in, 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 the, in, the, in the German guidelines. So in my view, uh, as soon the new developments uh, at the OECD are yeah, uh, final, uh, the guidelines need to be updated again. Um, Important for you as a taxpayer, criminal tax aspects will become even more relevant in the future, more than than already in the past, and they were already relevant uh, here in Germany. Um, language issues. Um, I think the guidelines deal on three or four pages only about language. So you have to apply for uh, English language. Um, um, if, you if, if you want to provide documents in English, you have to apply for that. So even a master file uh, in English uh, is not uh, something you can provide um, without um, an application. So, that is surprising, but yeah, it is included. Three or four pages about language and uh, uh, translations. Um, again, here the right of the tax authorities to select an alternative TP methods. We talked about it. Um, new in Germany is uh, the possibility for a tax inspector to request your TP documentation outside of a tax audit. So in the past, um, a TP documentation was requested only in a tax audit, typically years later, um, but there was no obligation to file a TP documentation together with your um, tax, um, tax file. That is new. Now you can be asked for that uh, whenever the tax inspector has an appetite for, for that document. Um, and finally, there's an invitation of the tax administration um, for preliminary discussions and reconciliations uh, with, with the tax authorities. So that's a communication thing. Um, yeah, they want, as in other countries, uh, yeah, we know this from other countries uh, for a long time. In the Netherlands, for example, the German tax inspector wants to communicate with you as a taxpayer, um, even out of a tax audit, uh, as soon as possible. The best message rule. Yeah, we talked about it uh, when we uh, have introduced to the foreign tax law. Um, you need to explain and justify your selection of your uh, chosen method um, as the as the best method. Um, but the letter or the, the, the guideline provides the right um, an alternative correct transfer pricing method by the tax inspector. Um, if this is more probable from 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 this view, um, yeah, that is an uncertain situation, uncertain point, um, and you have to provide and to support the tax inspector on that challenge. Um, the power of estimation has been 
extended. Um, the so-called spoiler of evidence uh, must expect uh, that an appraisal will be carried out. So that's a situation when a taxpayer uh, tries to, to hide information or uh, tells you, as a, uh, tells the tax inspector, I can't get any information from my uh, uh, parent company in the US or Japan. So that will not work anymore in the future. Um, you as a German um, um, subsidiary uh, uh, have, have now to, to provide that information or an appraisal will be carried out. Um, we have an unspecified term, highest possible probability. Um, so this opens the door for the tax inspector to challenge you on your uh, Transfer price, or your, or, or yeah, on, on 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 the transfer price being determined by you as a taxpayer, um, and if he is of the opinion that your price is not correct, um, and he thinks there is a higher possibility for another price, he can do an estimate on that basis, and he can support that. Um, by a database study, that is something we already see uh, in at least, uh, yeah, or maybe in, in all uh, tax uh, audit cases here in Germany. Um, there is always a discussion about the usability of your transfer pricing documentation. Is that complete or not complete? Is that usable or not usable? Um, so the usability of your records uh, will not prevent you from any um, estimates or estimates for, for profit adjustments um, or for further information requests. So a fishing expedition um, yeah, is now legally or from the, from the opinion of the tax inspector um, allowed. Um, so I'm looking forward how this uh, could be uh, solved uh, positively. So I, I don't know um, how the tax inspector will, um, will use that um, tool uh, to their advantage. Change number four. That is the administrative guidelines on transfer pricing that has been published uh, in July this year. Um, there were, were, and and uh, that is uh, different to the to the past. In the past, um, before the tax administration has published um, a guideline like that, there was a discussion with. Uh, um, lobby organizations with uh, business organizations to reflect um, the outcome and uh, the um, yeah, practical, practicability of, of that guidelines. That was different uh, this year. So the new guideline came without any reflection with the business. Um, and I think the quality and the, in, the, the, the content of, your, of the documents uh, clearly uh, indicates there was no business um, uh, reflection um, in, in that and yeah that makes it different to apply the document. Um, the main intention is again um, as close as possible um, to uh, refer to the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. We see that in, in, in many uh, chapters. Um, so that I think one indication for that is that the document has only 44 pages uh, instead of more than 100 before. So uh, they streamlined it by uh, referring as much as possible to the OECD guidelines. Um, the aim is a harmonization of the global transfer pricing standards for um, avoiding or reducing test disputes. If that will work, we will see. Um, by 
in my opinion, the OECD guidelines are just a compromise between the OECD member countries on transfer pricing, on the, uh, um, on the elements on transfer pricing, and have the quality of an comment only it's it's not, it's soft law it's uh, it has it has not a quality of a law uh, but now germany has that um, uh, has made a law out of that so on the one hand we have a soft law on the other hand we have now a hard hard law in germany um, and has that really a legal character if they refer to the OECD guidelines without uh, implementing that word by word in German law. I think that uh, will lead to, to challenges for, for you as a taxpayer. Um, another topic is the temporal applicability. We see that in, uh, in, in ongoing tax audits, the German tax inspector uh, comes up with the opinion, yeah, what the OECD guidelines include, that is just a confirmation what we uh, think since centuries, it's just a confirmation. But uh, the, 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 the content is uh, applicable uh, since years. Um, and an example is the applicability of the DEMPI concept. The first time we saw that was in the OECD transfer pricing, uh, pricing guidelines 2070s, maybe um, a little bit before in the in the uh, OECD PEPS action points, but um, officially uh, in the OECD guidelines 2070. Um, from what time are they applicable? Before 2017? Um, is the Tempe concept applicable for a financial year 2009, for example, or is it applicable for years since 2017, or is it applicable since in, in Germany um, uh, this year when uh, it is um, part of the, the German Foreign Tax Act? I think that is an open question. Um, we uh, will see that. Uh, uh, we will see how Belgium has uh, dealt with that. There's a court case in, in Belgium about it. Um, applicable 100% or the, uh, the OECD guideline should be applicable for uh, non-double taxation uh, cases. An example is Brazil. Germany has no double taxation treaty with Brazil. And Brazil, on the other hand, is not an OECD member country. Um, the question here is what applies now to the taxpayer, um, the OECD world or the local Brazilian transfer pricing uh, world, um, and what is the basis, just in theory, on what uh, the tax authorities um, would agree? I don't know. I think uh, to announce the applicability for non Double taxation treaty cases um, without any uh, reflection, I, in my opinion, is not 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 clearly expressed. I think that will uh, lead to challenges in the future. Um, another important thing is that the principles of profit corrections in Germany um, are now. Um, yeah, in a in a clear uh, sequence. Um, so there is a, a conflict between profit adjustments according to paragraph one foreign tax act and the uh, pro and, and the profit correction on the basis of hidden profit contributions according uh, to German corporate tax law. That was not hundred percent clear in the past. Sometimes. Uh, to foreign tax law, sometimes to corporate tax act, that was not clearly discussed. Um, now that is uh, here in this new guideline uh, clearly expressed. So the foreign tax act is complementary. Leading is the uh, other regulation on profit contributions according to German corporate tax law. And um, yeah, I think that is important to have now. Uh, 
that uh, in, in, in good order. Um, extension of related party de definition, um, yeah, that has been expanded to networks. So that could be a network of a, a sports association like the FIFA. So if there is a party, has a part, one party an interest that another party uh, would make profit, so that could be seen as a related party situation. Um, and the transfer pricing uh, uh, rules need to be applied. Um, then we have now the legal implementation of the arm's length principle of uh, the TP methods and the comparability analysis. Um, again, the German tax administration is referring um, extensively to the, to the OECD guidelines. The arm's length principle um, is um, a 100% copy of the OECD complemented by the principle of a prudent business manager behavior. So that is something we already know from, from the past, nothing new. New is that a independent transaction partner um, needs to be defined as a profit maximizing transaction partner. So in my view, this is a conflict with the arm's length principle because uh, we have now the profit maximizing situation um, within a, a multinational group. Um, how that should work, I don't know in the moment. Um, in, that is, I think, an important um, uh, interpretation um, of the German tax authority. Um, then to the transfer pricing methods, that is uh, full adoption of the guide, OECD guidelines, um, complemented by the German hypothetical arm's length comparison concept. So in case there is no um, comparable situation um, available, you need to go to the hypothetical arm's length comparison. That is a complex thing based on valuation methods. Um, that is uh, uh, yeah, added to the OECD guidelines. Um, the comparability analysis is um, full in line with the OECD. Um, important from a German point of view is that this typical German um, thing of a middle and hybrid entity. So we had that before in the German guidelines has been deleted. So we, we, in, in the past we had routine fun, uh, routine entity, we had an entrepreneur uh, um, uh, entity and in, we had the um, situation that uh, an entity has the profile of both a hybrid um, with features of routine and features of a strategy uh, of, a, of an entrepreneur that has been deleted. That was um, um, in the past always um, uh, yeah, triggering uh, challenging situations with the tax authorities. I think it's uh, now clear this middle or hybrid concept uh, is not applicable anymore. Um, the guidelines include a clear picture of the tax administration on loss situations. Um, yeah, it is clarified that in case of any doubts, a loss has to be absorbed by the entrepreneur of a group. So a routine company should achieve a positive result and uh, the German perspective is a, a five years uh, period. So over five years, um, a routine company should uh, achieve a positive result. Otherwise, um, the losses will not accept it. Um, there is a, a opening clause. Um, you can uh, provide your argumentation, your individual business model. Um, so in case you have seven years or you have three years or whatever, or you have a a startup situation, what is different from industry to industry, so you can uh, provide that uh, to the tax authority, but the general rule is five years. Um, there is another um, challenging 
element, um, the tax inspector can adjust your um, uh, profits of a um, yeah, sales entity, um, even in the case of uh, the same price with a third party, but with uh, uh, deviating terms and conditions. So price is the same, but the conditions are different. So that opens the door for the tax inspector to challenge you on that and to adjust your, your uh, transaction. Um, again, the timing of the pricing is decisive. Um, so you know you need to go back to to the to the point of time when the transaction has uh, been concluded between the related parties. Dispute resolution and documentation again um, fully aligned with the OECD guidelines. Um, on dispute resolution, um, the document refers to, to existing fact sheets from 2018 on dispute resolution and coordinated tax audits. Um, on documentation, um, reference number one is made to the administrative principles 2020 um, and uh, in the end to the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. So that is by looking on the German um, transfer pricing documentation requirements, um, yeah, look at the OECD and you know what has to be documented in Germany. Um, next point is the DEMPI concept. Um, again, reference is made to the OECD guidelines. Um, the control over risk concept has been implemented. Um, in my opinion, it is still questionable if the DEMPI concept included in the OECD guidelines will be or will become the international standard and how the different countries will um, see the DEMPI concept in the future. Um, maybe you have country one accepting DEMPI and we have country uh, two not accepting DEMPI uh, complemented by these timing uh, conflicts. Um, I think that uh, is not clear that this will become the international standard. Um, as mentioned before, we have seen a court case decision in Belgium. Um, in this um, case, um, the court has to had to decide on the applicability of the OECD transfer pricing guidelines 17 uh, for the financial year 2009. Um, and um, the tax administration was of the opinion applicable for years uh, before, the court uh, has decided not applicable. So in this case, the OECD transfer pricing guidelines 95 um, has been applied. I think that is a, is a decision. I think you can um, discuss that with your German tax inspector. If he will accept that, I don't know, but it is, from my point of view, an indication um, how this uh, um, timing uh, issue should be, uh, uh, yeah, should, should be uh, in the, in the, dealt by, by the tax administration. On inter, intra group services, again, reference made to chapter seven of the OECD guidelines. Um, there is one statement, a separate billing in addition to the delivery of goods and services uh, is possible and required if a third party would pay for that separately. So uh, to argue, I do not uh, charge for intercompany services. This is included uh, in my um, transfer price for goods um, will not work anymore. So you have to uh, prove that uh, a third party will not pay for that uh, separately. Otherwise, uh, it opens the door for the tax inspector to to adjust the situation. Um, on the methodology, cost plus, full cost basis, so that is then the remuneration. Um, last point on low value 
adding intra-group services, again, reference made to the OECD concept on that, and um, acceptance of a markup of 5% for low value adding intra-group services. On financial transactions, um, chapter 10 of the OECD guidelines are applicable from a German point of view. Um, we have an interesting um, trend in Germany on in intra-group loans. Um, first of all, a um, discussion is necessary, is that equity or debt capital? Um, in Germany, we see the trend for, for the qualification of intra-group loans as equity in inbound cases with the consequence of um, rejecting um, interest uh, deductions. So um, I think that is a challenging thing for the next uh, for the next uh, months and years um, because Germany here has uh, opened the door for for that um, for that challenge. Um, the treasury function is uh, qualified as a service function within a group of multi of a multinational. Uh, remunerated on a cost plus with an opening clause if there is more than treasury or a more uh, uh, treasury with, with additional function you can go for another methodology but the general rule is a cost plus. Cash pooling, cash pool leader should be remunerated on a cost plus as well and um, the legal situation here is uh, there was a plan to implement um, uh, legislation on fin financial transactions in the Foreign Tax Act as well by this ATAT Umsetzungsgesetz um, that was initially intended, but at the end it took, uh, did not uh, take place. So in the moment we have a guideline, but we have no legal uh, rule for that. Uh, so this area remains open, um, maybe in the next um, round of legislation uh, that will be introduced. Yeah, the takeaway, I think we are close to five o'clock. Um, yeah, although the extensive alignment with the OECD guidelines increases the legal cer uh, certainty, in my view, many points remain unclear or are not uh, defined sufficiently or are uh, yeah, like, like, like this term more likely, not well um, supported with, with guidance. Um, you as a taxpayer should review your existing documentation for all open years, even years back to maybe 14, 15, 16. Um, are they in line with the new requirements um, in Germany? And um, if necessary, if you ident will identify any gaps in your documentation, rework that, supplement uh, that with, with the new information um, for avoiding uh, the risk um, to be challenged by the tax inspector. Um, in my view, um, they will use these uh, new weapons um, in, in, uh, in, in, in the next uh, tax audits. Um, so I have no doubt about that. Um, yeah, and the retroactive applicability of the OECD guidelines to old years um, is not clarified and maybe this Belgium case will uh, be completed by cases in other countries. The moment is uh, the situation really not clear and uh, can be interpreted by the tax inspector on their uh, yeah, personal view. Yeah, so that is a quick run through the latest developments in Germany. I think um, some improvements, but um, some challenges, new challenges as well. Um, I think uh, transfer pricing will be uh, an interesting uh, discipline in Germany. Thank you. Uh, hi, Karsten. We have actually two questions. Yeah. Um, the first uh, is, where exactly is the ruling written that domestic retention periods are extended to foreign countries? 
Um, that is uh, in the guideline the, the interpretation of the tax administration. So that is clearly expressed that um, you have to apply the same retention period uh, in Italy, for example. I don't know exactly the retention period in Italy, but just as an example, um, for Italy or France or wherever, uh, as in Germany, and Germany it's 10 years. You can't uh, argue we have a retention period of five years. I do not have that information available. Sorry. Um, you have to take care as a taxpayer in Germany that your foreign related party um, is able to keep um, this information for 10 years. Okay. And uh, his second question is, uh, please let us know again where exactly it is stipulated that the tax authorities can also demand TP documentation outside tax audits. That is exactly in the same document. Um, so there is a, a clear statement that this uh, that the tax inspector can ask for that. There is an example um, uh, mentioned. Um, this example um, is. Uh, um, referring to um, to a mutual agreement procedure. So, in case of a mutual agreement procedure, the tax inspector can ask you for for the documentation of other years. But that is not um, uh, uh, that is not limited to this example. So, it is uh, the, the the wording is open and uh, is open for a tax inspector to request that for other uh, situations as well. And for these two questions that I just uh, asked, is it only administ uh, is it only administrative principles, but not law? Yeah, correct? yeah, exactly. That's not legally binding. That is the opinion of the tax uh, authority. That has not a, a, a legal quality. It is the opinion of the tax authority. So you can uh, reject that request by referring. Um, to a missing legal basis for that, but it is the opinion of the tax inspector. Okay, thank you so much for your question, Jens, and thank you so much, uh, Karsten, for presenting today. It's very interesting yeah, to hear about welcome. the current updates. And just for all of you to know, we will be sharing the um, presentation and recording of this webinar on our website yeah. by the end of the week. Yeah. All right. Have a Thanks good you. evening, everyone, yeah. and see you in our next webinar. Thank you. Bye.